AI problems just fail and cannot go into production because um, they did not understand well at the beginning what was the need. Bienvenue, donc, euh, euh, chers abonnés sur euh, la chaîne YouTube. Uh, today we are uh, with uh, a special guest. So we are restarting the podcast of uh, uh, Enonyi School. And uh, I have a uh, uh, next colleague, a uh, friend, and uh, an expert in data science with me. I will let her uh, introduce herself. Thank you very much for Hania for accepting uh, joining me on the podcast. So I will let you introduce yourself. Who are you? Where do you come from? What is your background? And uh, what do you do in your in your life every day? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ekwe, for your invitation uh, to this podcast. It's really uh, an honor to be with you today in this podcast. Uh, so my name is Hania Koshani and I've been working in this field, data science. Uh, it's been five, more than five years now. Uh, actually, a mixture of data science and data analysis, but right now I'm working in data science. And uh, my background starts uh, with the statistics. So my, my undergrad studies were in statistics, and I continued uh, my master's uh, with uh, uh, industrial engineering in Polytechnique de Montréal, mm. uh, in Montreal. <laughs> so, and it was data science oriented. Um, and now you're a data scientist in uh, in one of uh, big bank in, in Montreal, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I'm very happy. You know, we have like uh, the engineer background. Uh, from Polytech and the scientific with statistic, a lot of mathematic uh, background. You know, the first question I often ask my uh, my guests uh, is to define what is the data science. Uh, what what in uh, a really simple world? How can you, for a kid or a children, how can you explain or describe what we call data science? Sure. Uh, so data science is a multidisciplinary uh, field. So basically, it's a mix of statistics, mathematics, computer science, programming, um, and all of it together, plus a business knowledge that we always need. Um, so people in data science can come from each of these backgrounds, like uh, they can come from data, which is statistics, like me, and some come from a uh, technological background, more the uh, computer science and software engineering, and some come from a uh, business background. So uh, the mixture of all of these together um, uh, would, would um, be part of data science. And uh, in our day-to-day -day work, we uh, need to work with um, different types of data and, and, and do analysis on data, and then at the end uh, do a predictive model and um, produce insights, dashboards, uh, illustrative graphs or anything <laughs> for, for the line of lines of business. Wow. So... Uh, is is a, is a lot of things that you say you talk about different uh, di uh, disciplinary like uh, mathematics uh, programming so uh, do you need all those skills to be a data science to be very good in statistics in mathematics in programming in a business uh, knowledge do you need all those skills to be like a data scientist 
Um, the short answer is no. no. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Of course. laughs> so uh, you can, you can, your field can be one of these. Mm. And then when you start working, you, you um, gain all of this knowledge. Mm. Um, so a little bit of it, especially um, computer science, if, if you're from coming from a statistic background, so you need a little bit of knowledge in computer science for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, minimum uh, knowledge is for sure required. Um, and the other, on the other hand, also if I'm coming from a software engineering uh, field, a minimum knowledge about statistics for sure is required. Mm -hmm. And um, some courses in machine learning, uh, because mixture of these two is also important. If I'm a software engineer and I have some knowledge in the statistics, it's not enough. It's important mm. to know how I can use all of this knowledge together to um, uh, to solve a data science problem. Wow! So taking some course in data science is always helpful to mm. to to start. <laughs> so I, I would say that you know is a new field. Right, uh, data science. When I say new, is like uh, those ten years we are talking a lot about data science. In your point of view, what what happened? Why is it just like a buzz? What now? When Tom, someone is talking now, you need to say AI, uh, data science. <laughs> it's just like uh, I don't know. Uh, it seems to be a buzzword. What happened? What happened? Because in the field. There are like uh, some peer, some uh, uh, experts who start this uh, 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 field like uh, twenty years before, thirty years before. But we didn't have this buzz on the on the data science or AI field. What happened? And in, in these ten years, we have this uh, emulation. In, in my opinion, is. Um the, the, the thing is with the internet and with the um, collection of data, because as we collect more data, then we think more about how we can analyze them and how we can use them to predict the future. Mm -hmm. So basically, as we collect more data in the past 10 years, there is more need to, to um have data science and, and use data science mm -hmm. in our business. And that's why you see that uh, more and more companies are thinking of uh, hiring data scientists mm -hmm. and um, use their data to, to, to be able to beat the market. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can be left behind. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's uh, that's the main thing about um, is a competition data now. Science. You know, exactly. it's a competition like uh, people like you. Everybody want to hire you, so exactly. It's a competition. Yeah. Like for example, I give you an example of Tesla. Yeah. Um. Why Tesla? For why was very. Uh, I mean, like. Uh, uh, I mean, the stock and everything was exploded. Yeah. It was very important, and it was on the uh, top of the news and everything. Um, because it started earlier than any other company, mm. uh, to, to the best of my knowledge, that uh, the, it was the company, the f maybe the first company that used data mm. to um, to train uh, their their um, uh, cars to to be automated, yeah. to be uh, to use artificial intelligence and everything. So other companies also started the same thing, but mm -hmm. uh, later. Yeah. So they have a longer history of data mm -hmm. uh, in Tesla. So this this is what put them forward. <laughs> um, so so you have to be like a pioneer in your field, right? <laughs> you have to be like uh, the first to start, like uh, uh, discover something. But also when you are the first, you can fail. Like uh, the first two, you know, you can you can yes. first. The first, because I know that for a while I, I wrote like uh, around 10% of the model of every company go in production because sometimes, you know, the model is not stable. The model is not uh, 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 performance enough to be in uh, interaction with a uh, real uh, uh, human being, right? And I'm, I'm really curious about the process to to develop a model 
uh, as a data science, what is the process when you are uh, on a project, you want to develop a, a model or you want to, to find something? Why, what is the, the, the process you, you follow to do that? Um, <clears throat> oh, is there a process or maybe... Is yeah, there for a, sure. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just hit a little bit of water. <laughs> um, so, yeah, for sure, there's a process. Uh, it always it starts with, um, with understanding the problem because you, you pointed out a very important um, fact that um, many AI problems just fail and cannot go into production because um, they did not understand well at the beginning what was the need. So first the of business all, or the 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 data science. It can be either of each or both. Okay. Because yeah. So sometimes from the AI team they may not find the, the mutual language and they can be misunderstanding about what is the need and why um, they want this to be solved by an AI model. Okay. So Sometimes when we understand the need, AI model is not the answer. Okay. So they, they may think that it requires an AI model, but it's not true. Mm. So it's very important for the AI team to understand what was the need and why they came to us to um, solve this problem by an AI model. Mm -hmm. And they can always consult and we, we should always ask a lot of questions to understand the needs because sometimes with the first statement, we may think that, oh, we know what's the problem, but it's not. Maybe the first statement is just misleading. Mm. So we need to understand what is the need and then see if an AI model is good for this kind of problem. Do we have all the requirements? Because after that, we understand, okay, AI model is good, but then do we have all the requirements? Yeah, what, are, what, what are the requirements? So... For the first question, before I answer your question, for the first uh, question that if AI model is the answer, yeah. we should see, th if the first clue is if they're looking for an automation. Okay. If there's no automation needed, is this, if it's a one-time thing, yeah. AI, model may, AI model, sorry, maybe is not the answer. Ooh. Because AI model is to do an automation at the end. Okay. So that's the first clue. Mm. So, and then um, if AI model is the answer, now do we have the tools? So a good history of data, like uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> data. And if we have the data, do we have the tools to treat that data? Mm. Like in their, for example, in the problem that they have stated, they need a large history of data. Just, just assume that. Two years, but, three years. For example, yes. Yeah. And then do our machines, uh, I'm sorry, are our machines capable of handling those data? Do mm. we have good tools? Do we have a right CPU or anything? <laughs> um, so it's very important to know that what are the tools? What are the data? Mm. Um, can it go to production ever? I mean, Sometimes there are many constraints in putting something in production. Mm -hmm. So security, all of these to be security, or maybe uh, biases in the data, or those kind of uh, exactly issues, right? yeah. or limitations. Okay. Like, uh, sometimes there are limitations in putting something in production. For example, the output the output of my model provides two features. Two features is the output of my model. Mm -hmm. But in production, I can only put one feature. So mm -hmm. what should I do? See? So there are a lot of things to consider before even starting mm -hmm. a project. Um, so this this period, like uh, I will, maybe you say, I, I'm sure you say it depends on the project, but I just feel like uh, this part of the analytic is uh, uh, the, to make sure that we need data. Because now... Everybody is in AI, in the, the, uh, um, machine learning. Like uh, every problem, everybody wants to use Python and then crack data. And 
one your laptop crash you feel like oh i don't have enough cpu i have to go add like change the laptop so i just feel like this part is very important in the model development like just to start with the business understand the needs make sure that they have the data uh, enough data to do what need to be done and also the capability in terms of uh, architecture uh, uh, and is it possible to deploy the model at the end exactly. so those questions is, is a really good question i never and I, me every time i find out oh, ai let's do machine learning <laughs> all that let's grab the data so uh, now that all the requirements are uh, let's say that we have all the requirements. So now, what is your first step? Let's say that we go through all the anal analysis. It can go on in production. Uh, we have the big uh, CPU, laptop, <laughs> on the cloud. Everything is accessible to you. What should be your first uh, uh, step to, to start the model? Um, um, so the first thing, uh, the first step is to... Uh, um, after that, we know the data is there and everything for our kind of problem. So it's to, to make sure that we are in a continuous contact with the line of business, with the, with the, with the business people that have asked us to, to solve Involve this them in the... Always involve them. So the, f the first step is to understand the, the, the problem and business terms. Mm -hmm. Like... Because there might be a lot of uh, a lot of information and data that we may not understand, we may not know as a data scientist, and it's always and it always can vary from one problem to another. So this step is always important to understand the business. Mm -hmm. So when we understand the business, um, and by the way, we can always look online to find the same kind of problem mm -hmm. and to read articles to know what are the different ideas there that we can use mm. in our problem. Google is my friend. Exactly. <laughs> Even <laughs> I'm using uh, ChatGPT as an assistant, <laughs> Google still is my friend. Exactly. Yeah. In finding articles and everything, yeah. Google and ChatGPT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and also data exploration and then um, adopting data, configured data, um, based on our needs. Mm -hmm. So an important step is to create the features that we need. So we may create like 100 features out of only 10 columns mm -hmm. of data mm -hmm. or more. Uh, I mean, even more I than saw, I features. saw like 1,000 features at the beginning of some uh, model development, yeah, 1,000 features. Is exactly. it possible? Yeah, it's, uh, it's possible, but as you have a larger data you your your uh, model has to be more complex mm -hmm. so larger data more more number of columns need more uh, complex models so mm -hmm. um, so data engineering data preparation and everything is a very important step and mm -hmm. it's it's much more important than modeling itself because Ooh. Uh, we have a very um, famous uh, expression that we say garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. So if you don't have the right features that can describe your target, how are you going to build a model mm -hmm. that can answer your question exactly. if you don't have the right input? Mm -hmm. So the model is not a magic. It's just mathematical ca calculation. Mm -hmm. So we need the right input. And the right input is about the features and also about the right filters on the data, mm -hmm. about the right roles on your uh, <laughs> in your table. So uh, this the data preparation takes more time than modeling. And is it like that, a Pareto Pareto rule when they say 50, uh, 18, 20, 80, 20, 80 uh, uh, data engineering, 20 data modeling, or is it 50, 50? It's not 50-50. It's not 50-50. Uh, no, uh, okay. it's, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to define a, a hard percentage like yeah. <laughs> but i can say maybe roughly yes i mean the data preparation is really a larger proportion of of uh, the whole uh, uh, process so when i say whole process i mean from uh, from starting up to a model deployment. model deployment so 
uh, after that, yes, it's modeling and the, the, the I mean, the, the way that we select the model depends on uh, <clears throat> the possibility of putting it in production because many times it's, it's, it's very um, common that, for example, very complex models cannot be in production sometimes mm -hmm. in the real world. So, so, for example, sometimes we cannot put in production a neural network because the line of business says it has to be simple and it's understandable. Is a black box. Exactly. They it's don't like black box, box models, yeah. especially neural network. So, uh, like black box mean that it's not easy to explain why the model is just to, just for people who don't know. Exactly. Even yeah. though that there are a lot of uh, tools out there to explain, interpret mm. these black box models, but still um, a lot of uh, business people don't like black box models. Mm. So that's another, that's a constraint. And another thing is that Sometimes we cannot go with very simple models either when we have a lot of data, yeah. a lot of features to handle. So in that case, uh, we need um, more complex models to, to handle those data. So there's always a, a lot of experiments with different models that we can come up with the best at the end. That's cool. And then uh, when the model is, is chosen, then the deployment is more like it depends on the architecture of the system of the, the company, right? So it yes. depends on the, of the, the... Do you guys, like in this process of data engineering, uh, data modeling, and data uh, like production, do you, do you have like uh, some tools that you can say are uh, uh, key or very important through this through the three process? three uh, step like uh, uh, what do you mean by python or uh, do you use like is, is it like uh, uh, important to have those kind of uh, you know uh, uh, yes. software to, to yes to, to, to program yeah yes okay. yes it depends uh, it depends on the, uh, the the production environment and how we want to put it in production so uh, we have different teams at the um, at the company, at the company that they um, may use different tools. Okay. So some teams can use SAS, and then at the end, uh, when they put it in production, is a SQL code and oh. uh, like so that. So you can do the thing with SAS. Uh, mm, yes, yeah. I, I I don't do it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, ah, okay. it's just possible. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so. Depending on the teams, it can be different. In our team specifically, we work uh, with uh, Python, Python yeah. which is, in my opinion, the most popular language uh, for data science. Yeah. And also the production environment is uh, Databricks. And uh, again, uh, we have we can have different options. As I said, yeah. we ca it can be in SQL. Mm -hmm. It can be, uh, and by the way, when I say in production, we have different languages because in production is not necessarily an AI model. So it can be just a table that you want to put it in the production. The results, the output. Exactly. Yeah. So it can be a SQL. Mm. Um, but in our cases, when you wanted to put in production uh, uh, the output of an AI model, so we, we should also include the scripts of the of how we built uh, how. Um, the pipeline of uh, prediction is made. Mm -hmm. So we have to put that in production as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it can be PySpark and, yeah. um, uh, and also SQL uh, R, 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 on the site. R, no? Uh, R, I haven't seen productions with no. R. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, it, for me, it's, uh, it's more clear because, you know, Sometimes when uh, uh, I go through the, um, like Kegel, you want to the, uh, do some context about data science, you don't see all the, all the, all the process. They give you like, uh, they give you like uh, data, clean data, and you just have to apply model, 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 and tune the model to find the, to increase the performance, you know, to reduce the biases. 
so you will not aware about okay when is done what happened next you know or what happened before you get the data so it's more clear for me mm -hmm. and i'm really curious about like uh, uh you working in the finance um uh, uh field uh what i don't want to talk about the, your company but in finance go like what are the uh, hot topic using ai or machine learning like uh, i hear about trading uh in general what are the hot topic now um, three three top topic hot topic on um I can name uh, the, the things that I'm familiar and aware of. Yeah. <laughs> there might be other things that I don't know. Yeah. Um, so um, one very important thing is um, um, and when I say finance, um, for example, in banking, mm -hmm. uh, having a, a credit score internally mm -hmm. at the bank. Okay. So credit score internally at the bank uh there are a lot of advantages okay um one is that there are when it's internal the company or the bank has uh, access to information that is not accessible outside mm -hmm. um so that is one thing and also um fraud detection okay so live fraud a lot addiction. of fraud nowadays exactly. it's crazy exactly now we we are recording during the during like uh, the holidays and uh, i receive yes like every day i receive an, at least two texts sms of someone asking to click on the link and get money or that someone hacked my bank account and it's crazy yeah? exactly it's crazy, yeah so fraud detection is very important um, to be um, right in time mm. and not too late. Yeah. And a lot of systems in place, they, um, I mean, the systems in place, they um, create a lot of false positives. Mm -hmm. So if the analysts want to go through, like, for example, 5,000 false positive, mm. it can take forever to analyze each of those yeah. fraud cases. Mm. So an AI model can really help on that uh, to reduce the number of false positives um, to help with the fraud detection. Okay. And also, uh, if I can include no, it's, it can be actually any financial services mm -hmm. that you want to provide a financial service to clients. So to identify the needs of the clients. Yeah, this is key. Exactly. Yeah. Do, should, I, should I assign this product to this client? Yeah. Uh, so knowing the, the clients by an AI model can be very helpful mm. to offer the right service yeah. and uh, the right product. To is, is to give like uh, the right service at the right time to the client based on what he needs so yeah i like that exactly. I, I really like that i would say that for me this is like uh you know giving the right tool to the right people and i also hear about the you know the amazon or was it amazon or a company who sent like uh uh, uh diapers to to uh, a woman because they know that she's going to have like <laughs> a kid so yeah. it's just it's just funny and i know that you know we have some um like in the tech world you know women and men uh we are not at the same uh level yeah, is, is 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 an affirmation i'm saying that you know uh, because even if in my team when I'm working, I work in the data field. So we have like, uh, I would say three on um, 15, 15 people. We have three, three women, women working in the team. So we are more like, uh, you know, men club, you know, <laughs> so uh, I just want to, to, to hear about you, how, uh, also for the little girl, maybe watching you, how it is, uh, for women to um, to be in the data science field and also how can we help you women uh, to get more space 
and get uh, like so that we can have 10 or seven and seven women in my team for example like we can have more women i know that my boss want that to have like more women involved in the tech how can we help how how do you feel yourself like a minority in in the uh, data field uh, um, and also how can we help you uh, as a teammate to you know to, to, to get more space. It's a complex question I'm asking, but uh, it's an affirmation because for me, when I was looking for data scientists, and maybe I talk, I, uh, I told you that, I was looking for data scientists for the podcast. I have more men in my, uh, in, in, in my network in the field. And at one point I'm doing, I was doing a like podcast with men and at one point I was like, no, it's not, it's not, I'm just redoing the same um this balance we have in the society complex question so i will let you answer <laughs> a long <laughs> question complex and long question um yeah it's a complex question and i mm, i hope that i can answer it well yeah. <laughs> um uh, there are a lot of aspects and um, that um uh, that i can <laughs> cover in my answer yeah um well first about the fact that in some teams, we, uh, men uh, might be in the majority and, and women can be a minority. Um, how they can give more space mm -hmm. to women. Um, I think um, trying, for, from men's side, trying to be more inclusive uh, and accepting the differences between women and men and women mm -hmm. um so not expecting to um not expecting to uh the, the, i mean to see the same things that they see in a man but so they can they should see the same thing in a woman so mm -hmm. they can come from different backgrounds and different mindsets mm -hmm. and a different environment as a woman. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for a man to be inclusive and to, um, to, to um, accept the other qualities, you see? So you as a man might be very into um, uh, tech games mm -hmm. and <laughs> things like this, but s someone as a woman might not be interested in the same thing, but they might be good at something else, mm -hmm. see? So I think it's very important for men to be inclusive and to be able to understand women as they are mm -hmm. um, and empower them in what they are good at mm -hmm. and not lowering them or... Um, uh, lowering their confidence mm. because of something that may, they may not know mm. as the same level as someone else who is in mm. So um, I think from men's side, this is very helpful if, if they can be inclusive. Mm. And on the other hand, if I want if you want me to talk about from women's side, how mm. they can uh, have more space. Yeah, little girl or exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it can be intimidating to work with um, a lot of men colleagues who may have different talents than us. Yeah. Um, so first of all, we should not lose confidence, and we should always think about our. Um, uh, I mean, our our strengths. You know. There are things that I'm good at, and I should use them um, to to show off and to take this space. Mm. See, um, so if at the beginning I feel like, oh, I'm intimidated, maybe I should talk to someone who can help me in that. Mm. Maybe I should talk to some consultant to say how I can improve this. So sometimes we need help mm. to. Um, um, to improve our situation and be uh, as confident as we want. So when we get that confidence, we can be more productive and um, 
yeah, and and um, we we can yield better better results. Mm. Um, I hope that answers yeah, your yeah, question. Yeah, 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 and just uh, you also give me like um, a good sense of how I can also help my colleague. You know, my colleague because I uh, I can. I can see sometimes that you know my boss, like my 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 manager or my partner, is uh, someone who empower like the, the the woman in our team. And maybe sometimes as a man, we are more like a comp competitor. You know, it's like oh, he's just empowering uh, women. You know, and we we are here is a men club, and maybe sometimes it can create like. Um, uh, a little bit of com or jealousy or conflict. Okay, okay. The 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 boss like you and and <laughs> give you more power. But what what do you say? Just resonate in me to say, okay, he's aware about what he's doing. You know, in the team. You know? Exactly, yeah. and it was a very important point. Um, yeah, sometimes men can be more competitive than yeah. women. Sometimes women don't care if someone goes higher. So. Sometimes they may do, but I see that um, in many men, they can be more competitive yeah. and they want to be in forward and pioneer. Yeah. Um, Talk first and you know, <laughs> have, uh, be the one who said the last word. And done, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's very important for women because many women are not like that. Mm. I don't say all because we can, we can never say all, mm. but many women are not like that. They always give a space to others. So it's very important to give a space to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, no, it's just uh, working on, you know, I hope that, you know, men who are watching this uh, podcast can, uh, can think about it, how we can just empower more women in the field uh, and also women listening, how you guys can just use your skills and take more space and ask for, for help, like uh, Hannah say, when you need help to, 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 to get more space. And like you say, data science is a really complex uh, domain. Some people can be good in uh, mathematics and statistics and tech and programming. So you need many skills, many people to work together to get the, the, the result, right? So yeah. maybe you're not good in programming, but you're more, you're more like a scientist person. You, you are more like a, in the research side or governance, uh, you know, uh, leading the project, maybe, you know. So uh, even in like the tech, if you're good in tech, you want to be on the tech side, you go and show your colleague that you go in tech. So also, a, if I may add, yeah. um, for women um, who work in data science field, it's very important to know that we always have to keep up, not, not only women, oh. also men, we all, always have to keep up with the new technology and uh, with the new scientific discoveries mm -hmm. in machine learning. So um, it's not easy. Yeah? It's not easy. Yeah. So we always have to read, um, keep on reading. Um, we, we, we should assign some time, sometimes at home as a hobby, just to read maybe 15 minutes, mm. just, just a quick article, maybe five minutes, mm. but just read that. And it's very important to assign some time at home. And just another thing to say is to, for married or women who work You're with You're talking a about that, I'm thinking about my wife, you know, I was <laughs> like, I uh, have to, you know, Yeah, they, they need some stuff. time yeah. for themselves. And um, for women who are married or living with a boyfriend, it's very important to make sure that we as, as women are sharing our responsibilities. Sometimes mm. we tend to, um, doing things alone and be on ourselves. Superwoman. Superwoman. I do things at home. I do things at work. It's, it's not going to work. We have to always share our responsibilities. Mm. Um, at work, asking for help, not a bad thing. It mm. shows your confidence when you ask for help. Mm. And uh, at home also, mm. ask for help. Mm. So it's very important to, to share that responsibility to, to go forward and succeed. Yeah, my wife also doesn't ask for help uh, often. Eh? If you're watching, <laughs> she doesn't ask for help often. She like to, because I told her you just have a baby and she, yeah. 
and sometime yeah she, I can sleep and she'll be oh don't go sleep you know I'll take care of the baby you know yeah. I'll take care of you too you eat good I'll take <laughs> care of the baby here yeah. yeah. so yeah 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 I eat uh, I get I get what you mean uh is is a is a is a big question you know we can go in fail philosophy yeah. and uh it, we, can, we can discuss it like uh, for a day yeah. <laughs> so. but yeah thank you for for sharing that and also i want to ask you like a question about like uh, a role model like uh, do you have like uh, some people that you look at in the field and uh, maybe some people who inspired you in the field that uh, you you feel like okay I like the way these people, because with the, all the AI uh, uh, and data science uh, uh, improvement, uh, we can see that people can use it to do bad things, but maybe you have some key person that you want to share with us. We can look at their profile and look at the, also there to, to get inspired too. You have some people who inspire you? Well, uh, I can only say at work, if I, if I want to say, mm. uh, so um, I would not name, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been inspired with people who were working at, at the company that I'm working before me. And also the team that I joined, I was looking at them and I was, and I, I like to be there working mm. with them mm. so i finally joined them That's um cool. <laughs> yeah. so, so you, take, you take your space <laughs> exactly you took your space <laughs> exactly yeah. so um yeah because in a team that we are we work with uh many um uh many different uh, business problems mm -hmm. and all of my my co-workers are data scientists so this was the team that I wanted to work with, and people who were working in it already it was uh, were like a role model for me because mm. they were all involved with the, with the data science in their day to day, and they were presenting uh, new things. But at the side, also, I've been inspired by some women who were successful, and um, um, yeah. At, and, and very um, good presenting themselves mm -hmm. uh, because I think that this is something that sometimes women lack at work. So when I see women who present very well themselves, it, they are inspiring for me and mm -hmm. I look at them and see what they do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, not not a famous person, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's great that you know you have inspiring people close to you people that often when we get inspired it will be people very far from us that we cannot touch we cannot talk to but if you already have like a team or people in uh, in your network who inspire you is is great it's yes. great it's the best one you know <laughs> i know that you know some someone will say okay this is the joshua ben Juo, or you, <laughs> naming you know those youth guru of uh, data science but uh, that's great to have a good team and thank you <laughs> to this team i just failed to join you guys in your team you know? i like i like to to hear that you know i, I would say that we are almost close to to end mm -hmm. uh i don't know if you have any subject that you want to talk about uh uh, uh during the the i have two questions but if you have an idea or something that you want to talk about uh, just maybe just the last thing uh, uh, because I, uh, thinking about about women is something that I like mm -hmm. um, the things that can help women to to um, to always develop and always improve yeah. um, so I think it's not a shame if a woman in data science likes art or like something that is totally different with uh, with data science. Mm -hmm. It's very important if, I mean, you don't have to be a 100% nerd to be in data like science. You can, you can have your personal life, you can mm -hmm. have many variety of talents. Mm -hmm. And what is important is that when you pay attention to those talents and put some time for them, uh, it, um, it's like a charging battery. So when you, the battery is charged, 
you can be more productive at exactly. work as well. Mm. So what I want to say is that not only for women, actually, uh, for all people, mm. if they have some talents, they should keep up with them mm. and uh, to, to charge their battery so that they can be more productive even mm. at work. Thank you very much. That's my advice. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really good. <laughs> and it's why, you know, it joined my next question. My next question was about the passion. Do you have any passion? Because we talk about uh, modeling, data science, and women, and uh, when you don't have anything to do for data science, do you do, like, I don't know, soccer or <laughs> uh, hiking? Yeah, actually, I... Um I can do many activities, but okay. if I want to talk about the things that um, uh, are my, my passion, yeah. uh, so I'm part of a choir group. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been part of different choir groups. Okay. And yeah, lately we had a concert in November. Oh. So it was the McGill Choir Group. It was, it's a, it's a, like a group yes. of 100 people. Ooh, an institution. <laughs> yeah, I hear, I hear for, for, yeah. Yes. I hear about this, uh, this choir. Yeah. Exactly. So choir is, and singing is something that I am really passionate about. It's linked to uh, mathematics and statics too, uh, you know? I think that there are, <laughs> there, think? yeah, there is a link because, you know, to read the, the partition and music, I feel like music, there is a link with uh, science. Music. Maybe the logical side, yeah. and logical aspects of it, mm. uh, maybe, and also painting oh. is, is something that um, I find it also logical because um, when you paint from a pattern mm -hmm. and uh, you want to know that your, your painting makes sense, mm. <laughs> so that is also sometimes logical and, and painting also is something that I like. And whenever I have the time, I do acrylic painting. painting. Ooh, yeah. that's cool. So you, okay, if you were at home, maybe you can share some uh, art yeah. with us, or maybe some picture I can I can publish. Yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, that, that's great. And I, I will also ask you the, this last question. is more about uh, uh, inspiring other. Okay. What can you uh, share with a youth, a young girl, or a young boy uh, starting the journey in the data science, science field or thinking about starting the journey in the data science field, what can be, uh, I don't like advice because advice is not like uh, advice, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guru advice, no, just, you know, some idea that you want to share with them. Um, you know? Uh, one important thing is not to be afraid because um, it can it can sound intimidating and scary at the beginning um, because it's like oh data science it's like a bubble maybe <laughs> but the thing is not to be afraid and not to be scared of if you see people in data science know something that you don't know you know it's important to know that. If you have a room of 100 data scientists, there are a few of them that you can find that may share the same knowledge in the same thing. So people can come from different skills and still be successful in data science. Mm -hmm. So if you find someone in data science with different things that they know, it's not a threat. It's just an opportunity for you to learn mm -hmm. uh, from that. And you may something, some, I mean, share something else. That they don't know so no one is perfect and we always should keep learning <laughs> how how can how, how do you keep learning like um how, how do you keep learning I, I hear about the 15 minute but for a young a youth is do you have like uh, some uh, platform that you go and take courses or um, like what I did myself, because um, in my master's, my master's was uh, data science oriented. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but apart from that, I learned a lot at work. So being courageous to take a role that is data science mm -hmm. first. <laughs> and then when you acquire, I mean, you take that role, then you learn a lot. Uh, okay? That you deliver. 
Yes, because yeah. you have to deliver, so you have to learn. Yeah. You have to learn anything that is needed. Mm. That's my way of learning. <laughs> <laughs> but also, at the same time, we have to read all the articles mm. and share your knowledge with someone. Mm. When you share your knowledge with someone, you learn. So mm. what I did before I joined this team, I, uh, I took a role as a data science mentor mm. in an online platform. Okay. So I was a mentor. Every weekend, I was going through a data science use case, wow. and I was teaching them Python and everything. How go to, how going through every step of uh, data science in Montreal? So, yeah, uh, I was in Montreal, but it was a remote uh, course. So, what's the platform you can give the name? Yes, Great Learning. Great Learning. Okay, okay. Cool, yes, cool. yes, in, yeah. it's on my LinkedIn. Yeah. So, um, it was a post graduate data science program mm -hmm. and I was a mentor uh, so with like 10 15 students wow. every weekend mm -hmm. um, I was ex uh, I was going through that uh, Python I mean a Jupyter lab notebook Jupyter notebook mm -hmm. uh, step by step explaining to them how it works and that way I had to learn too because yeah. there were a lot of new stuff from me exactly. as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to learn in, in advance and then teach them. So it was a good way for me to keep up because at that time, my role was not data science for, yeah. the, for a short period of time. So I had to keep up. Yeah. And this, I found it the best way that I can keep up. Yeah. Me, the best way I'm, I'm keeping up is to do podcasts, to talk to people <laughs> like you, to, to get life knowledge. And, also uh, Kaggle. Kaggle, yeah. Yes. Kaggle, you have so a lot Kaggle of data. projects uh, are a very good way of learning. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've tried some, so I can say it's it's good. <laughs> it's crazy because uh, I I'm having this podcast. I just have this in uh, in mind. Uh, we didn't talk about ChatGPT. Any word about any word about ChatGPT about uh, uh, large uh, language model? Do you have anything to say about about that? Or? Um, actually, these are kind kind of penetrating everywhere. So. Even uh, that in my team, we do not work a lot with um, linguistic models, mm -hmm. but still we can use LLM tools to do queries. Like if I want to write a SQL query, I can just <laughs> explain that, give this uh, information to me, and mm -hmm. then it's going to give me the result. Yeah. So yes, for sure we can use uh, foundation models, and it's going to make our work much faster. We are not using it yet but we're gonna get there yeah they're not afraid about that right we should not be afraid about no, that no because yeah. because it's just a lot of accelerating people are, us. Yeah, exactly. it's just accelerating us because we lose a lot of time handling data writing queries oh how i write this function in, in sql asking in google yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of that it just <laughs> accelerate the way that we do things yeah it remind me when you say that. Remember uh, uh, when I st I started a job a few years ago, and uh, I met the senior developer, and he was like, "I was like, oh, you're very good." I was asking him a question: How did you, you know, know all those queries by heart? He was like, "No, no, it's not by heart. I have my Google open it here, and every time, you know, I just Google it. I was like, oh, he's like, yeah." You know, you you cannot handle everything you know in uh, in your head. So yeah, it's how the machine will help us to you know to to uh, to be faster and uh, to be more efficient. Exactly. Using them. Yeah. And and by the way, for people who want to apply for a data science post, yeah, they should know that for any post, not only data science, they should not meet all the criteria in the job job post. Good point. Only seventy percent is enough, and mm. if they meet all the criteria, it means that they are overqualified. They yeah. should look they for should, something that, 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 that has I, something that they don't know. Yeah, See? because you have to have the gaps to improve in exactly. your role. Yeah. Sometimes they say this is the hard requirement. That's yeah. another thing. But mm. a lot of things that are listed are not a hard requirement, so exactly. they can just uh, learn when they get the post. Thank you very much. I thank you very much for your time. Uh, for having us in uh, this beautiful uh, meeting room. And, uh, you know, I hope that we'll keep in touch. 
I know that you're going to holiday. Enjoy your holiday. Have Thank a good you. time. Relax and take, take take time. Forget about all the other things. Thank you. You too. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I thank you very much. Merci beaucoup d'avoir suivi. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys learn from Hania. I will share her LinkedIn profile. Also, uh, uh, all the information. If you want to reach out uh, to her, you'll be, she will be very happy to, to talk to you. It yeah, would yeah. be a great pleasure. Yeah, I'm so. waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.